the All Canadian Reptile Girl. My Earthling name is Annalise, and today is Canada Day. Or at least it will be when this video is published. And in honor of Canada's 155th birthday, I can think of no better video than one devoted to Canada's most iconic reptile. Let's meet the Canada Goose. items just to make sure that we are all on the same page. First is that the Canada goose is in fact a reptile, just like any bird. I think amongst the reptile slash nature slash sciency enthusiasts, that is pretty well known. But in terms of the general public, even though birds have been classified as reptiles for decades, it's not really the norm in the collective consciousness. So if you didn't already know this fun fact, Birds are archosaurs, a crowned group of reptiles that contains dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and their last living representatives, crocodilians and birds, and maybe turtles, but that's a whole other thing. This means that crocs and alligators and maybe turtles are far more closely related to birds than they are to lizards and snakes like Johanna, my Cali king snake here. Neat, eh? The other item to address is that I know there will be folks watching this who are not the biggest fans of Canada geese, and I can understand why. It is Canada geese, by the way, not Canadian geese. So to save you the hassle of having to put your specific personal grievance of about the Canada geese in the comments, I'll just run down the more common issues people have with these guys. They poop everywhere. While you might hear folks cite this as a big health risk, their poop actually doesn't pose any significant increased risk to us. It is still pretty gross though. I mean, it's all slippery and smelly. It's poop. They are noisy. Hawking away to communicate to each other or as warnings or threats or just to irritate us, they have become pretty comfortable around us humans and are not shy about begging for food and they can become pretty aggressive if you don't share. Speaking of aggressive, they can just be aggressive all around and do not back down, even against animals many, many times their size. They can be territorial, especially in the spring when they have nests and babies to guard. And when you're talking about a big animal with powerful wings and a tooth-filled beak, let me say, you do not want to be face to face with an angry Canada goose. You know, I didn't even know that they had teeth until that one bit you in Indiana. They're not really teeth, by the way, they're actually called um, tomia. It's cartilage that's like part of the beak and the tongue, but they basically look and function as teeth on the tongue. They also pose a risk to travel. Many a plane has been taken out by bird strikes from Canada geese. You've probably heard of the miracle on the Hudson? Yeah, Canada geese. Splish, splish. The general consensus around the Canada goose can be summed up in countless memes. I think I could point all day and there would still be more memes. In fact, legend has it that Canadians are so nice because all of our hate and anger is siphoned off and concentrated into the Canada goose. As nuisancey as some think they are, I think that they are underappreciated as incredible animals. They are big, beautiful, intelligent, emotionally complex. They are incredibly cool. And that cool stuff is what I really want to focus on today. Before I tell you a bunch of awesome things about the Canada Goose, I'd like to tell you a story, if you'll indulge me, for a minute, to help you understand why I love these cantankerous, waddly reptiles so much. I've mentioned before in some of my other videos that since I was old enough to walk, I would be out fishing with my dad pretty much every weekend that the weather was good enough. And unsurprisingly, this meant hours and hours spent around Canada geese. Despite their reputation, I have never had a Canada goose be aggressive towards me. The grumpy, hissy ones would just kind of move off somewhere else, but usually they just kind of hung around and did their thing while we did our thing. Now, full disclosure, my dad has had a couple of run-ins in his time, but he's been fishing a lot longer than I have. He is so old. But for me, they're always kind of constant companions during one of my favorite activities. When I was seven, my family and I moved to South Bend, Indiana for my dad's work. Moving to a new country was super scary. Everything was different. Not really different, but just different enough to be unsettling. Like, how many brands of ketchup do you need down there? A whole aisle in the grocery store just for the Oreos. Half the flavors don't even look that good. Is that really necessary? Anyways, new country, new school, whole new life. But guess who was there every time I went fishing or looking for frogs in the pond in my apartment complex? 
Canada geese. While I adjusted to my new life in Indiana, they were there as a little reminder of home. South Bend was great, but we only lived in Indiana for a little more than a year before we moved to Richmond, Virginia, where we lived for three years before moving back to Canada. Virginia was gorgeous. The James River is amazing, and the trees, there were so many trees, and they were so big. Snakes and turtles just everywhere, and the winters there, adorable. I loved living in Richmond, but it was, again, another big adjustment and was way farther from home than Indiana was. But guess who was there the first time I went fishing? Big, round, brown bundles of hissing fury, and it was awesome. So while many see the Canada Goose as a nuisance or maybe scary, to me, they were an old friend from home who brought comfort and helped me while I adjust to a new life. I am not ashamed to say that I love the mighty Canada Goose. You know what, you got a problem with Canada Gooses, you got a problem with me, and I suggest that I thought would marinate. Okay, enough of the mushy stuff. Let's get down to goosey business. For my friends in Canada and the US, I don't really know that I need to actually describe the Canada Goose. If you live pretty much anywhere in North America, go to a riverside park. See a bunch of big round brown birds with a long black neck? Those are Canada geese. For my viewers around the world who might not be familiar, the Canada goose is one of the largest goose species. They get around three feet long body-wise, eight to 10 pounds on average, and a wingspan of about five to five and a half feet is pretty typical. One of the subspecies, there are seven subspecies by the way, the giant Canada goose is the largest goose species in the world and can reach over 20 pounds in weight with a wingspan of over seven feet. That's almost twice the weight and a comparable wingspan of that of the bald eagle. These are big birds that you can find all across North America now, but at the beginning of the 20th century, they were almost extinct and were extirpated in most of their range, even into the 60s and 70s. But a stroll through almost any North American park today that's reasonably close to water will show you that they have made a tremendous comeback. It's estimated that there could be more than 10 million Canada geese across North America. They are naturally occurring in parts of Europe too, although most of the European populations would probably be introduced birds. They can even be found as far away as New Zealand, where they were introduced as a game bird and have made it their home. But like, why wouldn't they? New Zealand is awesome. Yeah, except for the goblins and orcs. Nerd. Hey. Conservation efforts helped stave off extinction and they have figured out that our riverside parks and golf courses are the perfect place to live and raise a family, safe from most of the predators that they would encounter out in the wilderness. For those few urban predators that they still do have to contend with, the acres of manicured grass that we provide them gives them lots of unobscured lines of sight to see danger approaching. In fact, they are so good at living alongside us that many populations no longer undertake their grueling migration. More on that in a minute. And we'll just stay put all year, enjoying all the amenities that a city has to offer. So now that we've got them all set up, let's go through some of the amazing things that you need to know about the Canada Goose. They are smart. Geese in general are among the most intelligent of birds. Domesticated geese can be trained quite easily, bond strongly with their people, and make great watch animals to guard against animal and human intruders. While it's not permitted to domesticate a Canada goose, at least here in Canada, though that would be pretty awesome, they still possess remarkable brain power. They have excellent memories and easily remember people and situations, and have powerful problem-solving skills. Story time, whoosh. That's better. Many years ago, my dad had gone into London, that's London, Ontario, not the Doctor Who London, to go fishing at a park downtown without me, which was rude, but it was before I was born, so I've learned to forgive him. After a while, he pulled out his lunch and started eating a delicious ham sandwich while sitting on the bank of the Thames River. Again, the Thames River in Ontario, not the Thames River that runs through the cool London. Downtown London is nice, but it does sometimes have some interesting folks that can be a bit unpredictable so my dad was being alert and keeping an ear and an eye out for anyone approaching him from behind so you can imagine his surprise when out of nowhere despite his vigilance someone just came and tapped him firmly on his left shoulder he turned to his left as one does when tapped firmly on their left shoulder to find no one there but while he was turned his beloved ham sandwich was snatched out of his hand by a canada goose who then waddled off with his prize back to his friends yeah at this very spot. My dad was mugged by a Canada goose pulling the old 
tap on one side and then move over to the other really quickly maneuver that is popular amongst high school bullies and pranksters. What's more is that it had the practice grace and confidence that this had to have been a go-to move for this goose. Yeah, my dad's a pretty smart guy, but in this situation, he was no match for a Canada goose. Not only are they smart, but they are social as well. If a member of the flock gets sick or injured and needs to drop out of formation, two to three other geese will usually fall out with them and will remain with their stricken teammate until they are able to resume flying. With rare exceptions, they will mate for life, with bonded couples rarely leaving each other's side. If one is wounded or ill, its mate will remain at their side until they recover or pass away. When that happens, or when they lose eggs or goslings, Canada geese will grieve for an extended period of time, foregoing food, displaying apathy, losing weight, and even isolating themselves from their flock while they process their grief. You'll see many family groups hanging out together. Mama gooses will regularly watch over babies from other moms who wander away and will happily adopt any orphaned goslings that they come across. It's not always so warm and fuzzy though. Mother geese that lose their goslings have been observed bird napping goslings from other parents, but Overall, they are very good communal caregivers. And they excel at teamwork, and this is most clearly on display during their annual migration. Historically, when the weather starts to turn cold, Canada geese migrate south in the fall to warmer climates. In the spring, they return north, often back to where they were born to mate, lay eggs, and raise their babies. I mentioned earlier that a lot of these geese nowadays forgo the migration. But there are still those that hold to the old ways and make the journey which is an incredible feat on a bunch of levels. During migration, Canada geese can travel almost 5,000 kilometers, navigating based on experience, using landmarks, rivers, cities, coastlines, mountain ranges, and celestial cues such as the sun and stars. They cruise along in flocks of up to 100 birds at a about 65 kilometers an hour, but with the right tailwind, they can hit over 110 kilometers an hour. If the mood takes them, they can fly at an impressive altitude of nine kilometers, pretty darn close to the cruising altitude of airliners, but generally they stick to about a kilometer off the ground. Individual Canada geese are able to handle the grueling demands of this migration thanks to elevated thyroid hormones that help increase muscle mass, increasing their metabolic rate, and lowering the temperature that their muscles can function at but it's their ability to communicate and work together that really gives them the edge. The V formation that a flock of Canada geese adopt when traveling together is unquestionably iconic, but they don't just use it because it's on brand. No, no, there is actually a lot going on there. From the ground, it looks like a straight V all on one plane, but each goose in that formation is actually flying a little higher than the goose in front of them. As a goose flies, vortices of air will move back and up, reducing air resistance and creating a slipstream. A goose flying in these slipstreams uses far less energy than they normally would, and by flying in this formation, geese can increase their range by 70% on migratory flights. This formation also helps keep the birds in visual contact with each other to ensure that they stay oriented and prevent crashes. Kind of an important part of flying somewhere is that you don't stop flying. <laughs> okay, so if each goose is relying on the goose in front of them to make their job a little easier, what about the poor goose leading the flock? Is his job way harder than all the others? Won't he gas out, get tired, and slow everyone else down? Yes, yes, and yes. And this is where teamwork really comes into play. Anyone who has seen a flock of geese flying overhead probably knew that they were coming long before they actually passed, thanks to a whole lot of honking going on. Like that honking. That honking is the flock cheering on their leader, encouraging them to push the pace. Think of it as words of encouragement from your personal cheerleading squad as they follow you about your day, providing motivation and encouragement as you work, completing any chores, cooking, exercising, even cheering you on as you relax in front of the television after dinner. As much as positive motivation can help, eventually the lead goose will get tired. When that happens, they will fall back and a new goose will take the tougher lead position until they get tired and a new leader cycles in, and so on and so on. Another thing you might have noticed is that the V formation has one arm of the V that is usually longer than the other. Why is that? 
Well, the flock is usually contending with a crosswind of some kind, unless they are flying directly with or against the wind, which is not that common. The geese on the longer leeward side of the formation will have an easier time flying thanks to the geese on the windward side breaking the crosswind. When you put it all together, you end up with like different zones of difficulty, and through constant communication, individual geese will transition through the various zones to ensure that the whole flock keeps moving apace. Through a clear, shared goal, lots of encouragement, communication, and excellent teamwork, a flock of Canada geese can cover as much as 2,000 kilometers in a single day. The Canada goose has a lot to teach us about working together, eh? You're so lovely! Look at them all waddling. <laughs> They're so adorable. Just want to hug them. <sighs> this ended up being quite a bit longer than I thought it would be when I started putting this together, but you know, that's okay. I think that the Canada goose is worth it. If you love Canada geese like I do, I hope that you enjoyed learning a bit about why they are pretty awesome. On the other hand, if you're not a fan of Canada geese, I don't expect that you're suddenly going to change your tune on them, but maybe this helped you see them in a slightly different light and might just give you a little sliver of something to admire. A big shout out to my friends on Patreon. You guys are as awesome as having golden goose eggs. Head on Re over. What, really? Yeah. Okay, how about Having you guys as patrons is like having a feather in my cap. Oh, I stop. Okay. Okay, head on over to patreon.com slash all Canadian reptile girl and join my flock. Oh. Really? Yeah. What? These jokes soaring over your head? Hey, oh, I got a question. When are you leaving the nest? Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh -huh. If it's not too much trouble, please give that like button a little peck and subscribe and peck that little uh, bell icon too so it'll honk the next time I upload a new video. Until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye! I think your brains are strapped. You're really cracking me up over here. You had that one ready for me, didn't you? I might have come up with a few goose puns just for this specific case. Bye! Hey, oh, oh, don't eat it! <laughs> Anyone who has seen a flock of geese flying will... Oh, I'm so sorry! I just kicked a goose. a bubble of spit like in my throat and it's very tickly it's right it's directly back here spit bubble. <laughs> <laughs> i figured if i snuck up on it it would work <laughs> and mm. mixed results Perfect.